Hey guys, Irene here. Today we have another Photoshop tutorial and I'm editing the picture from my last behind the scenes video where I shot with my very first camera which was a crop sensor plus a kit lens. If you haven't watched the video, uh, I will link it in the description down below. So this was actually shot with some DIY ring lights that my friend the photo fiend made. If you're interested in this setup, again, you can just go ahead and watch the behind the scenes video. And let's just start with the editing. I'm going to go ahead and open this in Photoshop. So as usual, I shot this in raw, so it's going to open the image in camera raw. So I'm going to go ahead and do some adjustments and mainly I want to fix the white balance. So let's bring the temperature down just a little bit and bring a little bit more of the green in there. Let's see. You can click this button to see the before and after what you just did. I think I like this. I like a little bit of warmness, but we toned it down just a bit to show more of a natural color. I'm going to go ahead and bring the clarity up just a little bit and then bring the vibrance up. Usually when you mess up the clarity, it kind of desaturates the color. So you will want to go and do the vibrance after. I usually don't do the saturation. I think vibrance tend to give it a more natural color. Also, let's go and bring the shadows up just a little bit. Although this was shot on the crop sensor, I can actually manipulate the shadows pretty well. It is grainy, but not too grainy. It's actually pretty good quality. Let's add a little bit of contrast here. Uh, let's see what the highlights are going to do. Just a little bit lower here on the highlights. Okay, let's see the before and after here. I think I like it like this. Actually, let's bring the temperature down just a little bit. Okay, so that looks great, so I'm going to go ahead and just open the image. By the way, if you shot your image in JPEG, you can still open it in Camera Raw. If you have Photoshop CC, you can just go into Filter and press Camera Raw Filter, and you're just going to go ahead and open it there. If you have an older version of Photoshop, you can go into File, Open As. Now choose any of your JPEG images and over here check the camera raw and it's going to open it in camera raw. So because I shot this at 24 millimeter, the image is a little bit distorted. So now I'm going to go ahead into filter and lens correction. And I'm just going to fiddle with different profiles here and kind of see what looks best. The Fuji film looks nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with this one. So this is before and after the lens correction. This before and after. As you can see, it really helps with that kind of warp um, thing that it does to the picture. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer. You just right click on your background, press duplicate layer and OK. You always want to do this before any action to prevent any mistakes because if you do mess up, you will be able to go back to your original image. So I'm going to go ahead and clear her skin just a little bit. She literally has perfect skin. <laughs> so there's going to be very little work here. I'm going to use my patch tool as usual. If you guys don't know where the patch tool is, you can just right click on your healing brush. Usually the default is on the healing brush and you can right click on it and just select the patch tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the imperfection and then I'm going to drag it to the side where there's clear skin. And I just go ahead and do this very quickly just to the red spots. This little red spot over here on her uh, hand. So I'm done with the patch tool. I just took a few little imperfections. Um, and yeah, I like to merge my layers. You don't have to if you don't like to do that. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and correct the color on her skin. I actually learned this trick from Anita Sadovska. You guys should check out her channel. She does really awesome uh, retouch tutorials. I'll leave her 
channel in the description down below as well but you just want to go ahead and create this empty layer right here and then you're going to change your uh, blend layer to color and now i'm going to go ahead and take my selection tool and i'm going to select the color right over here and now with my paint brush i always have it selected to the soft rounded brush i'm going to lightly go ahead and paint it on top of her um, dark circles right here. So as you can see, it changed the color from that kind of purplish to the color that we selected. And this is such a simple, simple way to color correct the skin. I absolutely love doing that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do some uh, corrective dodge and burn. I really like how natural her skin looks, so I do not want to use my patch tool too much, but instead to correct some of the uh, light and darker spots on her face, I'm going to use Dodge and Burn. So if you guys have been a follower for a while, you know that I have my highlight and shadow action and I just kind of play my action and I can go ahead and dodge or burn. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys how to make that action again for all of the new people. So um, you can go ahead into window and then press action and this little action thing is going to come up. Now you want to go ahead and press this little button and it's going to pretty much start your new action. I'm just going to call it one, but you can call it highlight because this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be creating a highlight action. So I'm going to press record. Now I'm going to go ahead into my adjustment layers here and I'm going to choose curves and I'm going to take the middle of the curve and I'm going to just bring it up like this, maybe just a little bit more like that. And then you can close it down and you're just going to invert your mask and you're just going to press control I to invert and that's it you can stop your action and your action is done so now if I delete this and if I press on the action that I just made and press play it's gonna go and play the action now to create a shadow uh, action or burn one you can again press this button right here and we're just gonna call it two but you can call it a shadow or a burn and I'm going to go ahead into my adjustment layers, check curves, and I'm just going to go now take it right here and just bring it down right there. And you're going to close it. And then again, we're just going to go ahead and invert it by uh, clicking control I. And that's it. Now you stop your action, your recording, and it's done. So if I play it, it's just going to play what we just created. I'm going to go ahead and delete those and I'm just going to play the actions that I actually made. So here's the highlight action. I'm going to go ahead and press play. And now I can take my brush. And again, I'm using a soft rounded brush and I'm just going to lightly tap it into places that I think need to be lightened just a little bit. I'm making my brush uh, bigger and smaller with just the brackets. Okay, so let's see what this just did. So this is before and after the highlight. As you can see, I was able to correct some of the dark spots on her face with just a simple, um, with just the dodge. And I'm going to go ahead and correct it with the shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and play my shadow action. So I'm just looking for places that are a little bit too bright and I'm just going to correct them. All right, so this is after the shadow. We corrected a few spots. So I'm going to go ahead and merge those. So now after I'm really happy with the skin, I'm going to go ahead and do some color correction. So I'm going to go ahead into selective color. I really like to play around with the reds because it mostly corresponds to her skin. I'm going to make them darker. I'm going to make them a little bit more yellow and a little bit more red. Just a little bit. And another tip, I like to keep this at absolute, not relative. You're going to see a lot more punch this way. 
Now her eyes are blue and I think it's gonna look really really nice against all of the warm colors so I'm gonna go ahead into blues and make them more blue. Then I'm gonna choose cyans, make them more blue as well. Let's go back into blue, make them just a little bit lighter and more blue. We can even add a little bit of green in there, make it more like emerald. Okay, I think that looks really nice. Now I'm going to go ahead into whites and I'm going to make them just a little bit brighter. As you can see, it pops uh, some of the highlights a little bit more. Let's go back into the reds. Yeah, I made them just a little bit more yellow and then we can go into the yellows as well and play around with those. I'm just kind of playing around here with different colors, seeing what it does. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it at that. So let's see the before and after on color correction. As you can see with making the reds darker and popping the whites, it actually made her um, freckles stand out a lot more, which I really like. So I'm going to go ahead and merge those layers. So now with the same highlight and shadow action, I'm going to work on some details this time. So I'm going to start with the highlight. I'm going to go ahead and play the action. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. So here I like to just make the highlights stand out more. So I'm going to go on the bridge of her nose and the top of her nose here, Cupid's bow. Pretty much whenever you see the natural highlight, you just want to intensify it. Let's do her eyes just a little bit to make her pop under her eyebrow. You can go a little bit on the cheekbone as well. And chin. You can go ahead also and make it a little bit bigger and put it a little bit on her forehead. And I also love putting it a little bit on the hair. Let's add just a little bit on her shoulder. Okay, I think that looks great. So let's see the before and after. This is before and after the highlight. I think it's just a little bit intense. So on the opacity, I'm going to lower it just a little bit. And now we're going to do the shadows. And with the shadows, I like to go in the eyelashes. So I'm going to make my brush really small. And with this very small detailed brush, I'm just going to define her eyelashes a little bit more. Make them a little bit darker. Same on the other side. I'm going to make it even smaller and I'm going to detail her eyebrows. Almost like painting little eyebrow strokes on. Especially right here where she's kind of missing a little bit of an eyebrow. Kind of filling it in. And then I really love to go under the lip. It makes the lip look a lot bigger. Okay, I don't think I'm going to do more for the shadows because it's going to make it look a little bit too fake. I think I'm going to leave it at that. That looks really great. So the final touch, I go into the camera raw filter again. Um, and I usually kind of go a little bit over exposure and the contrast and the shadows and maybe a little bit of a vibrance kind of add a little bit more of a punch to the picture. Okay, I think that looks great. So yeah, just made the picture a little bit more bright. And then at the very end, I'm also going to play my sharpen uh, action. That sharpens the image quite a bit. So this is before and after the sharpening. I'm going to tone it down just a little bit. If you guys would like to know how I sharpen my images, you can watch a whole separate video on that. Again, I will leave it in the description down below. All right, so this is our final image. Let's go ahead and save it. I'm going to go into File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. This is the best way to save your images for web use, for your Instagram, for your Facebook. So I'm saving it in JPEG, very high quality. 
Here I change it to 95. And the most important thing is to check the convert to sRGB. This is what's going to keep your colors true when you're uploading it to Instagram. So if you've ever noticed that your colors look dull, more green and blue when you upload to your Instagram or Facebook, it's probably because you're saving it in just a simple JPEG and not an sRGB uh, JPEG. So now for the size, I'm going to keep it at what it is and I'm just going to go ahead and save. All right, so here is before and after. Here's before and after. I hope you guys like this tutorial as usual. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.